so all right guys let us begin our topic trusses and we are going to deal plain trusses okay so write down in your notebook the heading plain trusses so we are going to start the topic plain trusses okay so first of all what i am going to do uh, i will write the definition of truss then you should copy the definition in your notebook so write down the definition truss okay under the heading truss write down its definition it is a rigid structure 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 in which in which all the members all the members in which all the members are subjected are subjected to either to either axial tension axial tension or or axial compression only or axial compression only clear so it is a rigid structure in which all the members are subjected to either axial tension or axial compression only this implies that this implies that bending moment bending moment is zero bending moment is zero everywhere everywhere in the structure so this is the definition of truss now i am going to explain what is truss actually truss is a point jointed frame up uh, sorry a truss is a pin jointed frame a truss is a pin jointed frame which is a structure made of some slender slender rods slender rods means a rigid rod so what i am going to show you the picture the picture of truss see this is a bridge truss you can see on your screen this is a bridge truss so if you observe this figure so these are the members these are the members which i am showing you by highlighting these are the members of this truss and these members are making a complete frame this complete frame that is a rigid structure okay actually it is not perfectly rigid in actual practice there will be some little deflections in in the uh, structure but our study uh, in our study we are assuming that there uh, there is no deflection there is no deflection in the members when they are subjected to axial loads okay so you can observe that this is a structure which is connecting the two points that is this point a and this point b and there is no there is no land between this region there is a river so also you can observe that there is no pillar supporting this bridge there is no pillar supporting this bridge so what will going to happen if any vehicle will pass over this bridge the load the load which is uh, applied by the vehicle on the bridge is is to be carried by these members only is to be carried by these members only and this is a example of bridge truss okay so if you observe that observe that in this case what what we are going to have okay so observe what we are going to uh, observe here actually uh, in steel frames these are steel frames and their ends are jointed by uh, by the rivets these are the rivets and by welding to and by welding to this plate and this plate is known as this plate is known as gasset plate 
गेसेट प्लेट्स ओके सो इट इज नॉट ऑफ मच मच इंपॉर्टेंस फॉर अस वी आर वी आर मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन द एनालिसिस ऑफ द लोड्स व्हिच इज कैरिंग बाय दिस ट्रस सो दिस इज अ एग्जांपल ऑफ ब्रिज ट्रस एंड द नेक्स्ट दिस इज द एग्जांपल ऑफ रूफ ट्रस सो इफ यू ऑब्जर्व दिस इज अ स्ट्रक्चर दिस द दिस स्ट्रक्चर आई विल शो यू लाइक दिस दिस स्ट्रक्चर सी दिस स्ट्रक्चर so this structure is also carrying this structure is also uh, carrying a frame this is a complete frame which is made by joining the several several uh, members in triangular pattern you can observe this triangular pattern okay in the previous figure also you can see different different types of triangle can be formed so there is a reason why these are triangles not on not any other uh, shape so i am going to uh, discuss the uh reason behind this that why they are arranged in triangular pattern okay so before that we have to uh, differentiate between the trusses okay so this 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 the the both of these example are the examples of uh, plane trusses plane trusses means their all members are lying in one plane but but in actual practice there can be space frames also there can be space frames also so what will going to happen in space frame in what will going to happen in space frames the the most preferred example for space frame space frames are uh, mobile communication towers mobile communication towers you can observe that the mobile communication towers are uh, 3d in shape and and arranged in triangular pattern so that is a example of plane space truss okay space truss but our study is limited to plane trusses means all the members of the truss must lie in a two dimensional plane clear so this is the case we are going to deal in our chapter clear next okay now i am going to tell you that uh, what is perfect what is perfect truss okay so the most simplest uh, the most simplest perfect truss that exist in nature is a uh, a uh, frame which is having three members and three joints so let us make that frame this is a frame this is a member number 1 this is a member number 1 this is a member number 2 and this is a member number 3 clear so there are three members and three joints the, let them let us mark the joints also so this is joint a this is joint b and this is joint c now i am going to make the supports this is a simply supported here and here is a roller support i will discuss each and every point that why i have made one simple support and why one roller support okay so that is not the matter of our concern so first of all look here and let us try to understand what is the perfect truss okay so this is the simplest perfect truss that exists in a nature okay so we want the degree of freedom of our system to be uh, either zero or negative if the degree of freedom of a system is zero then it is treated as a structure if the degree of freedom of a mechanism is less than zero then it is known as superstructure then it is known as superstructure don't worry with the degree of freedom if you have do not study the theory of machines then do not don't worry we will discuss in detail the concept of degree of freedom in theory of machines but for a while Uh, you should assume that for structure the degree of freedom of the uh, of the system should be zero okay so if some of you have uh, studied the kurzweil equation if some of you has studied the kurzweil equation in theory of machine kurzweil equation in theory of machine then according to that the degree of freedom is given by this formula that is 3 l minus 1 minus 2j 3l minus 1 minus 2j so if you observe here if you observe here there are how many links this is link number 1 this is link number 2 this is link number 3 so i am writing the number of links to be 3 and j represents the number of binary joints means the the number of joints which is carrying which is carrying the two beams at a point so this is one joint binary joint this is second binary joint this is third binary joint so there are three binary joints so it will become Uh, 3 minus 1 2 2 into 3 6 2 3 is 6 and this will become 0 
सो दिस इज अ स्ट्रक्चर सो दिस कम्स अंडर द कैटेगरी ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर ओके एंड दिस इज द सिंपलेस्ट स्ट्रक्चर एग्जिस्टिंग इन द नेचर सो इफ यू ऑब्जर्व केयरफुली दिस इज द सिंपलेस्ट स्ट्रक्चर इन द नेचर इफ यू वॉन्ट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेक इट बिगर इन साइज देन वी विल अरेंज वी विल अरेंज द होल स्ट्रक्चर इन अ ट्रैंगुलर पैटर्न विच वी विल अरेंज द होल स्ट्रक्चर इन अ ट्रैंगुलर पैटर्न सो द नेक्स्ट द नेक्स्ट परफेक्ट ट्रस्ट विच वी आर गोइंग टू शो यू इज लाइक दिस वन दिस इज लाइक दिस okay so this is also this is also a perfect truss i will show you how if you observe that there are two triangles in this figure okay there are two triangles in this figure now let us mark the number of uh, members in this so this is member number 1 this is member number 2 this is member number 3 this is member number 4 and this is member number 5 okay and now we are marking the number of joints this is joint number a this is joint number b this is joint number c and this is joint number d okay so in the above example in the above example we have the number of members uh, we have the number of members to be equals to 3 and the number of joints to be equals to 3 uh, but in this case in this case the number of members becomes 5 and the number of joints will become 4 that is a b c d so if you observe this is also example of perfect truss so what i am going to observe to produce a one extra joint to produce a one extra joint to produce a one extra joint this is this is this joint this extra joint that is in previous case the number of joints was 3 in this case the number of joints is 4 to having the number of joint to be more than the previous case we are requiring two more members two more members okay in previous case we are having only three members and in this case we are having five members that is 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay so in general the equation of the perfect truss that we can write is uh, like this okay so this is the equation of perfect truss that is m is equals to 2j minus 3 m is equals to 2j minus 3 where m is equals to 2j minus 3 where m is equal to m is equal to the number of members the number of members and j is equals to the number of joints j is equals to the number of joints so this is a case of perfect truss clear we do what will happen if degree of freedom is greater than 0 so it will not be a structure okay it will become a kinematic chain okay a kinematic chain because in kinematic chain uh, degree of freedom is not equal to 0 and uh, and and a kinematic chain is having the degree of freedom uh, supposed to be 1 okay so the in this case in that case the system will uh, will th those system will use to transmit the motion those system will use to transmit the motion it is not the matter of concern here we are only fully uh, having the discussion on the structures okay so this is the example of perfect truss so if something you uh, you want to write you can note in your notebook so this is the uh, definition of truss this is the definition of truss and uh, this is the uh, discussion that we have all okay so you should write this this equation in your notebook this is the equation of perfect truss this is the equation of perfect truss okay clear so this is all about the theory of this truss next next now we are going to do the analysis analysis so first of all before starting the analysis there are certain conditions that to we have, that we have to follow while studying the truss okay so we have to study those stresses so the conditions uh, we are going to write one second right so we are going to write uh, the conditions that we have to follow while studying the stresses okay so what are those conditions the first condition is first condition is all the members all the members should all the members should be pin jointed all the members should be pin jointed or hinged 
hinged only okay next the load the load should be applied the load should be applied at the load should be applied at the joints only the load should be applied at the joints only and the last one only concentrated point load should be applied only only concentrated point load only concentrated point load should be applied okay so you should write these we will discuss each point one by one when we do the analysis okay so first of all write this uh, conditions in your notebook and next there is a assumption that we are going to assume that the members the weight of the members are to be neglected in our analysis okay so there is one assumption first of all you write this point next write next write assumption next write the assumption and what is the assumption weight of the member weight of the members the weight of the members is neglected weight of the members is neglected okay clear so this is the uh, conditions and this is the assumptions which we which we have assumed that uh, the weight the weight of the member which is uh, making uh, the complete truss is neglected okay and and there is uh, also an another important point there is also a, another important point that a member that a member a member should make a member should make joints a member should make joints at its end only at its end only so what do we mean by this point that is a member should make a member should make joints at the ends only so if you observe that uh, we have discussed this simple truss so if you observe here so this is a member this member is making the joints at its end that is a and c similarly the 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 joint made by the member 3 is at only their end b and c and similarly the joints made by the member 2 at its end is a and b the, it 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 is not possible that uh, you will make another triangle like this and you said this is complete one member no this is this will not be the complete one member if if this is the condition then there if this is if this is a joint then this this part is treated as separate member and this part is treated as separate member okay so this is not uh, possible that this is a complete one member and you have ap ap and we have made a joint like this now it is not possible okay so if you are making a joint between this then this will this part will be treated as separate member and this part will be treated set treated as separate member so this is the point which we want to discuss okay right so okay so you have note down the conditions you have note down the conditions clear and these are the assumptions now what we are going to do what we are going to do let us suppose uh, let us suppose what we are going to have like this okay suppose we, i am going to make a structure here one second <coughs> okay <coughs> here i am going to make a simple truss structure
like this so this is point number a this is point number b this is point number c this is point number d this is point number e clear now what i have written in the above statements in the conditions that all the members should be pin jointed or hinge joint hinged so all these joints are either pinned or hinged okay what is pin joint so if you want to understand the concept of pin joint so i am making this ce member like this this is a ce member okay this is a ce member and this is a bc member this is a bc member so put this part put this part of this on this on this and insert a pin between them okay so this will become a pin joint okay this will become a pin joint what do we mean by hinge joint what do we mean by hinge joint so observe what is hinge joint if uh, this is a particular uh, one second okay what is hinge joint so suppose this is a hinge joint like this this is a hinge joint like this and a member is and one member is hinged like this okay so if you apply if you apply if you apply the force on this member if you apply a force on this member let us say i have applied a force f like this at a particular angle theta so this f can be resolve into two components like f cos theta and f sin theta okay so since this member this member is hinged at this point b let us say b so the what is this joint is uh, uh, doing so this joint will not permit the movement of this bar member bar bc in vertical direction so let us say this is f sin theta and this is f cos theta okay this is x axis this is y axis so, so on this bar external force f sin theta is acting in the y direction and f cos theta is acting along the x direction so this is hinged at b and what is this hinge joint is doing this will not permit the uh, the displacement of this bar in the x direction and along the y direction what but if you observe if you observe the moment the moment due to f sin theta about bc will be like this so this will permit this will permit the rotation of this bar about this b okay this will permit the rotation of this bar about this point b in the clockwise direction so this is the all about the hinge joint okay this is all about the hinge joint next uh, what we are going to do i have discussed the concept of hinge joint and pin joint so we have like we have assumed that all of our uh, members are joined either by the hinge or by pin okay so this is all about the hinge and pin joint now let us move further okay so i am going to draw i am going to draw uh, here a simple support a simple support here like this here this is a simple support okay and here i am making a roller support here i am making a roller support and 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 on this on this region uh, i have applied a load i have applied on on pin b i have applied an external load let us say p1 and on pin c i have applied an external load let us say p2 okay clear so if you observe if you observe carefully uh, this is a hinged joint and this is a roller support here this is a roller support okay so if you observe if i want to okay so you should write in the sideways in in the side you should write these points in the side of this supports so that you have the space below this figure to carry on okay so i am writing dividing erasing this so this is hinge joint and this is simple support okay 
so what i am going to do what i am going to do i am removing this and again making these joints below a certain distance like this so that i can show the reactions okay so i can show the reactions like this one so this is our uh, simple support and below this i have made the roller support like this okay like this one so right if you observe carefully if you observe carefully since this is a hinged joint at a it is a hinged joint at a so this hinged joint will uh, the hinged joint can apply the reactions in horizontal and vertical directions okay but there will be no resistance to the rotation okay so here let us say the reaction applied the reaction applied by this hinge joint along the horizontal direction at point a is rh and along the vertical direction let us say we have that rav rav clear but if you observe the roller support at e so if any uh, horizontal force is applied on the system then uh, there will be then if any horizontal force is applied uh, uh, on the system then what will happen what will happen uh, if you observe carefully that uh, there will not be any resistance in the forward displacement there will not be any resistance in the forward displacement okay there will not be any resistance in the forward displacement so there will be no horizontal reaction provided by the roller support so only the roller support can apply the vertical reaction so let us say the roller support is applying a vertical reaction that is rev like this okay rev like this so the e will also apply the force on this which is equivalent to rev according to the newton's third law of motion so it is also rev clear so what is the significance of this roller support uh, in the practical in the practical life uh, when we con uh, when we consider the bridge trusses so uh, in the summer seasons due to the uh, increment in the temperature there will be uh, you can see the thermal stresses can be create thermal stresses are developed in the members the thermal stresses are developed in the members so this term if you if you fix this system if you fix this system so the thermal stress will uh, will distort will try to distort the uh, will try to buckle will try to create the buckling effect in the members which is dangerous for the, our structures so we want to permit the along we want to permit the therm, we want to permit the expansion due to the temperature increasement so we have applied roller support to our structures okay so this is what we have the effect of roller support on the system okay so in this manner in this manner we have discussed like this also there is a uh, there is another one uh, the if you observe carefully uh, right this is the horizontal reaction this is the vertical reactions this is the horizontal reaction this is the vertical reactions and uh, this is the vertical reactions okay so this is all what we have discussed till now in the trusses chapter now we are going to start now we are going to start the determination how we can determine this support reaction when the external load is applied on the work uh, members okay at the pin joints so let us see those also right so we are going to start the next uh, the next uh, topic that is determination of support reactions so if you want to note down something then you can note from this now we are going to start the determination of support reactions clear so write down in your heading deformation sorry determination of support reactions so i am going to write determination of support reactions determination of support reactions so whenever any uh, whenever any amount of load is applied at the pin joints of our truss then what amount of uh, reaction will be developed at the support so we are going to discuss that 
so what is the concept behind this what is the concept behind this so the concept is write down the concept the concept is actually this truss is the purely the application part of our statics that what we have discussed in the previous three or four videos this is the purely the application part okay so we are applying the principles of statics in our uh, mem system okay so the what is the concept behind the determination of uh, support reactions so the reactions the reactions at support the reactions at the support are calculated the reactions at the support are calculated by considering by considering equilibrium by considering the equilibrium of entire truss of entire truss so this is the concept so let us uh, let us try to solve this uh, let us try to understand with a uh, one numerical problem okay so let us try to understand this concept with one numerical so write down it as an example okay write down it as a example so whenever any structure whenever any plane truss in our problem is subjected to the uh, the load the load at the pins then the reaction can be found by considering the equilibrium of the entire structure okay so what we are going to do we are making a system uh, we are making a simple system like here we are making the truss structure let us say like this okay so this is the point number a this is the point number b this is the point number c this is the point number d this is the point number e and this is the point number f okay so let us mark the dimensions let us mark the dimensions also so okay one second right so this dimension is about uh, 3 meter in length and also this dimension is about 4 meter in length and uh, this dimension is about 3 meter in length the dimension and this complete dimension this this one is 4 meter in length and and what is happening here an external load an external load like this an external load at d in horizontal direction is acting and the magnitude is about 10 kilo newton and the vertical loads at c and d are acting in downward direction each of magnitude 10 kilo newton okay 10 kilo newton so we have to determine the support reactions developed at a and f the support reactions developed at A and F. So let us assume, let us assume uh, the directions of their support reaction. So if you consider the, uh, let us say this is the horizontal direction and this is the vertical direction. Okay. So the reaction developed at, so this is a hinge joint at A. This is a hinge joint at A. So if you observe that this will exert a vertical reaction that is RAV. And let us say there is this direction, this direction, the reaction is RAH, RAH. In a similar fashion, in a similar fashion, since F is a roller support, so it will permit the, the, the 
the displacement along the horizontal direction so no resistance the no reaction along the horizontal direction only vertical direction there will be a reaction that is how much r f v r f v so what we have discussed that to determine the reactions we have to cal we have to uh, consider the equilibrium of the entire truss entire truss means this complete structure see this complete structure we have to analyze as our system this whole complete structure okay so let us uh, further move to solve that uh, how to calculate the support reactions right okay so now we have to analyze this the equilibrium of the complete truss so we have only three equations that is the net force in the horizontal direction should be zero the net force in the vertical direction should be zero and the net moment the net moment about any point should be zero so these are the three equations that we have only okay so if you observe let us try let us uh, let us write the first equation that is the net force along the horizontal direction should be zero so if you consider the forces acting in the horizontal direction then you will come to know that there are only two forces that is r a h and this external load that is 10 kilo newton so r a h is acting towards the minus so let us consider the direction of minus r a h like this and it will be plus 10 kilo newton like this so it will be zero so this implies that the horizontal reaction developed at a will be equal to 10 kilo newton so we have got the rh value clear and where along and in which direction in this direction in this direction we have getting rh clear now we are going to analyze the next part that is the net force along the vertical direction should be zero the net force along the vertical direction should be zero so you can observe that there are four there are four there are four loads that is rav rv rfv uh, one second rfv and these two external applied loads it is 10 kilo newton and 10 kilo newton so considering the uh, upward sign as positive so we will get rav plus rfv minus 10 minus 10 is equals to 0 this implies that rav plus rfv will be is equal to 20 kilo newton so we have got this equation 20 kilo newton okay so if you observe carefully if you observe carefully uh, rav plus rfv is equal to 20 kilo newton now what we are going to do we have two unknowns and one equation so we have we have we have to uh, solve we have to find out the one more equation and the and that equation will be found using this concept that is the net moment should be zero and we can we can uh, we can consider the net moment zero about any point in this system about any point in this structure so what what i am going to do i am taking the net moment to be zero about a you can take any point but consider but consider that uh, uh, but we have to select such that one of the reaction one of the moment due to the uh, unknown reaction will be zero so if i considering the support number a so the the moment due to rav will become zero so we can easily find rfv by considering the net moment about a to be zero okay so if you consider the net moment about f will be zero then rfv will be un will become the moment due to rfv will become zero then you can find rav easily but if you take any other point then you will get an equation again in terms of rav and rfv okay so you have to solve these two equations so so to save our time what i am going to do i am taking the moment about a so that the net the net moment due to the rav is zero because the line of action of rav is passing through a clear so what i am going to do if you consider the net moment about the a will be zero so i am going to consider the clockwise moment as negative and anti clockwise direction anti clockwise moment as positive so you can consider any you can consider any sign not no worries okay so this 10 kilo newton this can 10 kilo newton is having the line of distance of point a from this 10 kilo newton line of action is 3 meter 
this is having the distance of 3 plus 4 7 meters and this this this, this load 10 kilo newton uh, will have the distance of 4 meter from the a okay so let us write down the moment in clockwise direction is negative so what i am going to do the my 10 into 3 which is minus 10 into 3 because it is in clockwise direction again minus 10 into 3 plus 4 that is 7 minus uh, 10 into 3 plus 4 and 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 here rfv is in anti clockwise direction but this is also 10 kN in clockwise direction so what i am going to do minus 10 into the clockwise direction so it is will be 4 and it will be equals to rfv into the complete distance that is 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay and it will be equals to 0 so solving this solving this you can get rfv very easily so solve it solve it very fast in your calci i am also solving it okay so it will be uh, 30 plus 70 plus 40 so it will be about 14 kilo newton okay so it will be 14 kilo newton and since our answer is coming out to be positive hence the assumed direction is correct so rf will act in vertically upward direction with a magnitude of 14 kilo newton okay and if you consider if you consider the rav put this value in the equation first then you will get rav so you will get rav is approximately to be 6 kilo newton 6 kilo newton in upward direction okay so this is all about this is all about uh, uh, the reactions we have found in this problem clear so i am going i am giving you uh, one problem as a homework you can find you can find the reactions okay so i am making a structure for you a simple structure for you and you have to find the reactions okay so question write down the question as a homework so you have a structure like this one Now supports are here, okay. And uh, this this system is subjected to the external load of. Uh, it is a 10 kilo newton here and 10 kilo newton here so this is point number a this is point number b this is c this is d this is e this is f and this is g okay so all the distances are this is 5 meter this is 5 meter this is 5 meter and this is also 5 meter so you have to calculate you have to calculate what i also mentioned the uh, reactions like rh in this direction i have made rbh in this direction i have made and uh, rav i have made in this direction like this rav okay so you have to solve this problem on your own at home and i am writing the answers for this problem directly so you will get you will get uh, what rbh as uh, 50 kilo newton rbh as 50 kilo newton towards the this direction and rh will come out to be 50 kilo newton in this direction okay clear and rav and rav will comes out to be 
ट्वेंटी किलो न्यूटन इन वर्टिकली अपर डायरेक्शन एक्चुअली इफ यू सॉल्व इफ यू सॉल्व वाई कंसिडरिंग दिस आर एच देन यू विल गेट माइनस फिफ्टी किलो न्यूटन विच मीन्स डेट द साइन यू हैव कंसिडर्ड इज अपोजिट सो इन एक्चुअल द फिफ्टी किलो न्यूटन लोड आर एच विल बी टूवर्ड्स द लेफ्ट ओके सो दिस इज ऑल अबाउट द कंसेप्ट ओके सो यू हैव टू सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम ऑन योर ओन एंड यू हैव द आंसर्स चेक दैम एंड इफ यू सॉल्व वेरी गुड इफ यू नॉट then again again see the video okay then try to solve so this is the topic which we have discussed if you know if you okay note down this example note down this example okay or note down this then note down this one clear and then you have to solve this is as, as a uh, homework so this is a homework i am not going to solve here due to limited time okay so next let us move forward for the next concept that is interaction of loads reactions and internal forces okay so we will do this analysis in the next video uh you have uh, otherwise your lecture will become very long so you have to complete this lecture okay and uh, if you have any doubt if you have any doubt then you can message us on our uh, telegram channel on telegram channel you can find out our channel by typing the mechanical gate zone mechanical gate zone you search by this name on our telegram channel and we will uh solve all the doubts if you have any queries then you can mail you can message us okay so all the best for your preparation so we will we will meet in the next video okay thank you very much